This is my Mark II Golf project car. And over there, there are some eBay bargains that we're gonna be installing in today's video. Yep, your eyes are not deceiving you. We'll finally be putting some wheels on this car after nine months. Let's get into it. Over the past nine months, I've been working countlessly on my Mark II Golf. With each component we upgrade, repair, or modify, gets us a step close to the vision I have in my head. Since we bought the car, the vision has always been to build a clean Mark II with period correct modifications and OEM Plus upgrades, forming a perfect blend of retro goodness and OEM Plus flair. The Golf has gone through a massive transformation in a short amount of time. It's crazy to see how quickly this casual project turned into an expensive build. As some of you will know, I recently quit my secure full-time job to start up my own automotive upholstery business. The car has been built as a rolling advertisement that I can drive around and take to car shows so people can see the work in person and hopefully generate some cash flow from. Running a business and a YouTube channel is no easy task as you need time and money to grow them both individually. The problem is I like uploading videos too much but I need money to invest in the channel. That's the same money I need to put into my business, so what can I do? Well I've set myself a bit of a challenge. Can I still make an impact on the way this car feels, drives and looks on a budget without taking too much money out of the business? For this I turned to eBay. It's a great place to find bargains new and used so I wondered if I looked hard enough would I be able to pick up any deals? Well let's see. Well, the first modification we're going to be doing isn't actually modifying the car. We're going to be doing some repairing you see this car has developed a really loud squealing noise it's actually been here since i bought the car i've just been a bit too lazy to do anything about it i have some suspicions of it being at the auxiliary belt it turns off the crankshaft at the bottom turns this alternate pulley here and turns the water pump pulley just there i think what's happening is either it's worn or there's a little bit of play in the water pump pulley and it's just kind of putting a bit of tension on this uh, belt so I've bought a new one from eBay for about £9, definitely a bargain, definitely worth doing because if this belt is to snap you will completely lose all power because the alternator won't be charging the battery so at some point the car will die and you'll not circulate any water at all which means the car can overheat. So let's get this new one chucked on. Placing the belt is a very easy job on the Mark IIs because everything is easily accessible. The same can't be said for modern vehicles where there's safety, emissions and comfort technology crammed under the engine bay. All we need to do is loosen a few bolts to take the tension out of the belt. For this we don't even need to remove any additional components, making this a task for anyone with a basic understanding of engines. With the belt slackened we can remove and replace with the new one. If you're struggling to order a replacement, most manufacturers put a part number on the side. You simply put this code on eBay or give it to your local part supplier and you'll get the correct one. Now it's a case of installing everything in reverse order. I always make sure the letters are facing the right way when installing the belt. Also, some are directional, so bear that in mind before you put a new one in. With the belt on, I now need to set my tension, so I'll move the alternator up by hand and do up all the bolts hand tight. This keeps it in place but allows some adjustment. The way I've been taught is to allow the belt to twist by hand 90 degrees. The the newer style engines have an automatic tensioner so you don't need to worry about this step right guys new belt has been installed and on the initial start it actually sounds a lot quieter than it did before that's the first job done let's move on to something else after replacing the auxiliary belt i move on to the next task this problem is a bit more serious though as the car is unable to idle under its own steam the culprit responsible for the issues is the carburetor gasket over time just like any rubber made seal or gasket they break down go brittle and split in this case causing a massive fuel and air leak. This then causes havoc to how the car runs and drives so it needs to be sorted out as soon as possible. Luckily eBay sell Febby Bilstein gaskets for just under £14. They aren't too hard to replace as I'll show you now. Then we can start moving on to some fun stuff and get those wheels on behind that camera. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. First off we need to remove the intake hose and airbox. It's just a case of removing a 10mm nut, a couple of clips, unclipping the fuel line, removing the warm-up hose round back and an allen key bolt. With all that done you have access to the carburetor. Mine's been upgraded in the past to a Weber unit which is bolted to an adapter plate using four nuts and a paper gasket. So we need to remove those along with the throttle valve spring and the throttle cable. With the carb out of the way I need to remove the adapter plate which is held on by two allen key bolts and threaded bar. When all of that is done we can finally replace the carb gasket removing the four 10mm bolts beforehand. Looking at the old and new gasket you can see not only is the older one split but this rubber section is causing a fuel air restriction which will reduce power and efficiency. I mean we're only talking 75 horsepower when it was new but I'll take all I can get. With the new one on it's a case of fitting it all in reverse order. With the adapter plate installed the paper gasket that was removed needs replacing also so I made a new one using the old one as a template. Then we can fit the carb then the air box, then the intake pipe.
idle's much better. As you can see, the idle is pretty is pretty straightforward. Normally it'd be bouncing between 2000 RPM. Obviously with this I can control where it idles, so obviously we'll push it in. So if we take it all the way out, it does struggle to start because it needs to warm up itself. Oh, beautiful. We've also fixed the throttle cable because the pedal itself was actually sitting very far back. So I only had potentially 30% of throttle. Now we have a full range. We might be able to control the throttle a little bit better. When we're driving around the town and motorway driving and stuff like that, this car can be quite awkward to drive. But I think I've fixed that and I've fixed that. Now we've done all the maintenance, I think we should go and do some fun stuff. So let's tackle those wheels and uh, let's show you what we've got. Since we bought the car back in August last year, there's been one major part of the build that lets the car down, and that's the wheels. If you've been keeping up to date with the build, I've been running the 14 inch steels for the entire time, but there's a reason for that. You see, I had some special wheels planned for the build, but the process to make them fit has taken way longer than first planned, and I ran out of patience. So I ended up buying a cheap set of wheels to get me to the shows and make the car look half decent. The new wheels are made by BWA, a 90s built wheel for that retro five spoke dish look that will look insane tucked under those BBS archers. They're 4 by 100 16 inch by 7 inches wide and have a plus 30 offset which will suit this car perfect. In keeping with the theme of the video these were a bargain at £120 but they need some love. As you can see they need painting, new tyres fitting which I already bought for the other wheels and a couple of centre caps. In the effort to save money I'm going to refurbish them myself so I took a trip to Halfords. What we're going to do is to cut cost is do everything ourselves using all of this paint as you see here we have got two cans of high build primer an etch primer three cans of alpine white and two cans of lacquer so guys what we are going to do start prepping the wheel prime lay down the base coat put some lacquer on them and then we'll be chucking some tires on them and putting it on the car before we can lay the paint down we need to prep the wheels first by removing the tires valves center caps wheel weights and give them a quick wash it's an important part in achieving great results at the end so it definitely pays to spend extra time on this step first i go around the wheel lips with an aggressive grade sandpaper to make sure they're free from curbing as any imperfections at this stage will be enhanced when they're painted after that i go over the imperfections on the wheel face remember we want this wheel as smooth as possible to give us that glass like finish at the end but bear in mind this is a DIY and I'm no professional. Once I'm happy all the deep scratches and curbing have gone, I can use a scotch bright pad and rub down all the parts I'll be painting. This will key the surface and allow the new paint to stick to the old paint that's already on the wheel. Because it's a five spoke wheel you can see the barrels when looking from the front, so I wanted to paint those as well. It's not an area that needs lots of prep but requires lots of cleaning especially when you're scraping off 30 year old brake dust. I soaked them with a wheel cleaner and scrubbed the wheels with a scotch bright at the same time. I found this was a useful technique as the wheel cleaner didn't do enough on its own to lift the dirt. After a few passes I was happy the wheel was clean enough, now I can start painting. Next up we need to prime the wheel. Because we have areas of exposed metal from the previous owner we need to paint these areas in etch primer. An etch primer forms a physical and chemical bond between the metal and the paint for better adhesion. I applied around three coats allowing the paint to gas off and dry after the etch primer was sprayed on. Once that's done, I applied high build primer on the entire wheel wherever we're applying the base coat. Same as the previous step, I applied three coats and allowed it to dry in between. Once dried, the wheel will feel rough. We need to wet sand with a fine grit. Remember, we're only smoothing the surface, not taking the paint completely off, so be careful at this stage. All the patient has led up to now because we can finally apply the base coat. I went with the same colour as the car, which is Alpine White, because I'll know it will suit it really well. So again, like the steps before, I applied around three or four coats, allowing them to dry in between and wet sanding once it's all dry. The wheel at this point will look a bit dull because we haven't applied our lacquer. A lacquer is used to enhance the paint by creating a high gloss finish, but also provide a protective layer in between the paint and the outside elements. Using a good quality lacquer is important as I learned the hard way. The lacquer I was using was cheap and needed heavy coats to give a smooth finish. The problem with that is the paint can run and completely mess up the wheel. After I did all four wheels and mess up the finish, I realized I had some 2K lacquer in the garage which had a much better coverage and spray pattern. After a very long process, we have managed to get two wheels done there and two wheels done there. They are still drying from the lacquer phase so I don't want to disturb them too much. Uh, what we'll do next is get the tyres put on, get them balanced, get the tyre valves in, put some air on them 
and chuck them straight on the car. So I can't wait to see what it looks like. While the wheels were drying, I moved on to the next eBay bargain. So make sure you stay tuned to see how these wheels look on the car. While I was waiting for the paint to dry, I took another trip to Halfords and picked up some garage flooring. The old stuff was in really bad shape and didn't cover the whole garage, so I decided to completely replace it. The new stuff is around six times thicker, so it will be a lot more comfortable working on the car. After it was laid down, I gave the space a quick clean, ready to start on the next bargain. If you guys have made it this far in the vlog, I'd massively appreciate if you subscribed and liked the video. I'm trying a different style of video than I normally do. I'm putting more effort and energy into the educational and voiceover side of things to hopefully make the videos more interesting and engaging. If you like this format, please put some feedback in the comments down below. Ultimately, I'm creating these videos for you guys to watch, so I want them to be as entertaining as possible. Okay guys, next on the list we have these set of headlights. So these are actually off a Jeep Land Rover Defenders, um, anything with a seven inch headlight. Now the good thing about the Mark II, it should fit in the crevice, especially in the grill insert, perfectly fine. It's gonna be a little bit of modification, but it's not too bad. Uh, the reason why we are replacing them is because the headlights we have on the car are for a left hand drive car. The beam pan itself, so if you're looking down the road, it's opposite to where it should be so I'm potentially dazzling the drivers the oncoming drivers I don't drive the car at night anyway so it's not an issue but I'd rather have a car with the right light the other reason why we're replacing these is the Mark II Golf headlights they're absolutely dreadful at night it's like lighting a candle they're awful um, if you have a Mark II Golf you will literally understand any older car the lights are terrible to see at night we're going to install them today see how they look in comparison to what we've got now if not, I can just put the old ones back in, no problem. So all in, you're looking about £92 for this conversion, including both brackets and both headlights. This is even cheaper than the previous lights that were on the car. They will also give much better visibility in the night. First off, we need to remove the grill and headlights so we can start test fitting the new headlight brackets. The new brackets have three tabs that will foul the original headlight support, so we need to make some clearance holes in order to mount the new ones. I did this by loosely installing the new brackets with the side without the tab facing downwards. With the grill in place, I can move the bracket around till it's central in the headlight aperture. I used a cone cutter because that's the best tool I had laying around, so I drilled away the clearance I needed. This step, you'll be constantly putting the grill on, test fitting, removing the grill, clearance in, over and over until it's right. Once we're happy with the central point, I clamp the bracket to the headlight support and drill holes to secure the two together. With the bracket installed, I can put the headlight in for a final test fit. With everything lined up, I remove the headlight and bracket so I can paint the exposed metal parts on the headlight support, preventing them from rusting in the future. All we need to do now is repeat this process for the other side. Alright guys, the headlights have now been installed and they look absolutely fantastic. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I just think it's just complements the front end, just that little bit that I need. We've wired up all of the headlights so everything works. Side lights, daytime running lights, indicators, everything works as it should. I'm going to wait until later tonight to show you guys what they look like because you're not really going to see much in this light. So these headlights are, are quite simple to install actually. So in the kit, straight off the headlights you have this H4 plug and then two wires coming off. Red wire goes straight to your indicator and the green wire goes straight to your side lights. All you need to do is splice into the supply line on both of them and you will have working side lights and working indicators. Main beam and dip beam look really good. If any of you guys have got an old car, you know how terrible these cars are in the dark. So it was a much needed modification, but just look at that, look, just. <laughs> Oh my God. Now to address the elephant in the room, guys, not only have we changed wheels again, but also why do we have Ben's wheels? As you guys know, I had 14 inch steels on this car, but because we want to go to 280 mil brakes, they don't actually fit over the 14s and the tires were absolutely dead. So rather than spend money on putting tires on the 14s and then have to change my wheels because they don't fit, I've just run around on Ben's wheels. Um, massive shout out to Ben for 
for lending me the wheels it's been a massive help um, just to get me around so I can get some new wheels which is the wheels you've already seen after we painted the wheels we had to wait until Monday to get them on so in that time I'd already put the headlights on so that is why everything is a little bit uh, skew with it so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below these headlights guys on the interest of eBay bargains they're 13 pounds each for a headlight pair so the 26 pound for a set of front headlights and then you're going to need the brackets i can't remember what the brackets are i'll put it in now but really these headlights ended up costing me less than those crosshairs did and they're left hand drive so they're not even supposed to be on this car on the road so yeah the other good thing about these is there are tons of different seven inch headlight options on ebay so if i ever get bored of these i can just switch them out and put some other ones in because they're already bolted in place all i need to do is remove the three bolts that hold the actual headlight in swap them out plug it in straight away but guys i'll give you one more look look at this oh my gosh absolutely phenomenal Right guys, the fifth modification we have on this video is this. So this is a Mark II Golf peel key. I don't know the origins behind it. I believe these may, may have been offered as an optional extra or anything like that. Generally only seen these on the higher end models, 16 valves and G60. So either it's you get it free with the car or you have to pay extra for the, um, for the option. But essentially it is a key, got a little torch on the bottom of it which helps obviously when you're bringing the car in at night and it just tidies up your key ring a little bit. They look loads better and for nine pounds on AliExpress, I think these keys look really nice. They're really satisfying to turn as well. That sounds really silly. Obviously when it's sent to you, it's sent as a key blank and I've had this pill key for about 10 years now. It weren't until yesterday I was passing a key cutting shop. Any shop that cuts house keys should be able to do these because these are the older style keys so what i did was get the key that i use um, to start the car so they essentially made a copy from my original keys now i didn't pay anything for this the guy says he can't charge me because i gave him the blank so he doesn't offer any guarantee if the car will start but looking at the cuts they look pretty much the same so we're going to see if we've scored a bargain or whether it's we've just killed a decent key okay that works that is a good sign now will it work in a 33 year old key barrel let's see guys or oh, we have ignition That's a Mark II Golf do Mark II Golf thing. Oh, for God's sake. There we go. There we go, beautiful people. So yes, it does work. We got that for free. Now, usually, to get your key cut, it's actually cheaper than you think. You can pay between 10 and 30 pounds to get a whole key cut. So definitely recommend doing it and it just brightens up your key ring so why not right guys wheels have now been finished let's get these chucked on and we'll get some nice cinematics for you guys The rear sat really nice, the fronts were a bit sunk in, 
We can make it look more aggressive by adding spacers. Using a bit of maths, I calculated 20mm would have been perfect to get the wheel to sit closer to the arch without touching when aired out. But I realised I left mine with Ben when we temporarily swapped wheels. I had two 15mm spacers laying around so I ended up using them instead. When I have some spare time, I've tried the 20mm spacers on. As you can see, the 15mm spacers made a big difference to the stance of the car and when it's aired out, it's going to look so much better. Alright guys, the wheels are now on. What do we think? I think they look absolutely phenomenal and I can't believe how good and how accurate the colour is to the actual paint of the car. That's kind of what I was looking for. I wanted something that would match the paint of the car and just kind of blend in. I just think white on white, especially when that rear wheel is tucking in looks absolutely phenomenal obviously we do need to sort out the center cap situation which we have got at home we just need to get some stickers made up and they should be on we've put the 15 mil spaces on the front i think we could probably play around with maybe getting some 20s on just to get it coming out a little bit we have got a little bit of clearance in here we need to to be concerned about obviously the car itself when it's aired out is naturally turned outwards so both wheels are actually pointing outwards once we sort that, we might be able to get away with 20 mil spaces on the front. In terms of the back, I think we're pretty much there because we've got really, really limited clearance just there. And then at the front, it's just touching the kit just down there. But I don't want to cut too much because that's where the BBS badge is. But well guys, what do you think? I absolutely love this car now. When we set up the camera on the back, I did one side, the body shop did the other side. They both was not in conjunction with each other, so the tracking was completely way off. The result of that is it absolutely chewed through the rear tyres. Now, rather than me spending money on putting two tyres on the 14s, and then when we do the 280mm brakes, we then have to sell them because they don't fit anymore, I ended up buying a cheaper set of wheels. We currently have a set of wheels that are being refurbished as we speak, but they are taking that long I got impatient and ended up buying wheels myself. To keep costs down, we ended up painting them in alpine white to match the colour of the car. And I don't think they look too bad. They're not the best. They're not show wheels. They're not going to be winning any awards anytime soon. On camera, they look pretty decent. Um, but when you get up close, the yeah, they, they're yet to be desired. However, guys, it looks a hell of a lot better than the steels did. Just let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Oh my god, I can't believe it though. It looks so much better. So much better. Just white on white. Because we've got smooth side strips and because we've got the white BBS kit on, it would have only made sense to go colour coded wheels. Absolutely phenomenal, guys. Is there anything else that you want to see on this build? I know we've pretty much done 90% of the stuff, but there is still little bits and bobs that we can change around the car. So if you do put it in the comments down below, I'll probably get something put down and we'll make it happen. Just had this car just drive past. This is why I love this car, because people are so nice to me when I've got this. When we had the Golf Estate, guys, not one person ever waved or put the thumb up. Actually, I tell a lie, there was one person in the whole four years that we owned that car. Whereas this car attracts so much attention, it's ridiculous. But people are so nice with it, so crazy. We're gonna be moving on to the next modification. You'll notice my hair will magically grow back, and that is because this was filmed in advance because the wheels it took so long to put tires on we ended up putting everything else on so see you in a minute right guys so i wasn't actually planning on adding this in the vlog but i thought i would anyway it's not really a bargain i wouldn't say it's cheap so if you own a mark ii golf it is normally a cheat code to put your phone right where the speedometer is as your sat nav however when i had the issues with the car overheating i wanted to keep monitoring the coolant temperature and the rpms that i was going at so obviously the phone 
blocks the entire section that you're using. So we have a 3D printed solution. There you go. So it's a bit stiff, but it is actually a really good modification. Mark II Golfs don't really have a great place to put your phones. And if you have a single DIN head unit, you have nowhere to use sat-nav. If you was to look at the blanks, it does stick out like a sore thumb just a little bit, but I've put it in the right corner. So when you're actually driving like here, you can barely see it. In hindsight, thinking about the phone holder, <laughs> rather than spend 30 pounds for a blank with a bloody magnet on, I literally thought, why don't I just use the actual blank, drill a hole in it and glue a magnet to it? So it's not very good consumer advice, guys, but if you guys are planning on doing the modification, you can either buy the blank online which, let's be honest, it doesn't really go with the rest of them. Or you can put the original one back in and just glue a magnet to it. Like, 30 pound. When I put the phone to it, I realized how stupid of a purchase it was and how extortionate it is just for a little piece of plastic. So yeah, whatever. It's been a hell of a journey on this vlog. We have one more thing to speak about, which is the pedal so while i was editing this video in between the sunday we was at a car show and we came across these two uh, clutch pedal and brake pedal pads five pound from somebody on the stall and we also spray painted the accelerator pedal black i do believe you can still buy those um, but i'll just need to have a look online for one um, you can still get these online very very cheap and mine were absolutely destroyed, so it's worth doing. All right, guys, that has been eBay bargains for my Mark II Golf. We've replaced the wheels relatively cheap. The headlights were an absolute steal, and we did so much more in today's vlog. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. I am trying out a new format where I'm doing a lot more voiceovers, educating you guys on how I do these modifications and sort of advising you how much it costs and sort of what's involved and to encourage you guys to do it yourself. So if you do enjoy these videos, do let me know in the comments down below because ultimately you guys dictate what kind of content I put out. If you're not watching the videos, there's not really much point in me making them. So I only wanna put out stuff that you guys are gonna enjoy. Make sure if you want different type of content or if you want me to film certain things, put it in the comments down below and we'll make sure it happens. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one. Peace.